Welcome to number session six, day three. I want you to know on day three, Jesus rose from the dead. You're looking at a grave there on the floor. The grave could not hold him. Hallelujah. But has the grave got a hold of you? <clears throat> Have the grave clothes that we wore before we came to the Lord Jesus Christ, is there some stink in, in grave clothes? I want you to know Jesus took the sting out of death. He gave a fragrance. There is no more stench in regards to the grave clothes. And there is no grave that is going to hold us back. But why are you looking at a, you know, a life application study with a grave sitting there? Well, that's going to be unfolded tonight in regards to uh, uh, the, our apostolic leader from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She's going to be preaching, Stacy. But how come you're still focused on the grave? Well, I want you to know the grave it says, is not going to hold us. Amen. You know, in, in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, you shall not die. Do you believe in this? You're talking to Martha. But I think he's talking to everybody. Do you believe that the grave cannot hold you? Hallelujah. What is your choice? What is your choice? The blood of Jesus, resurrection life, now and forevermore. I love the way Billy Graham put it about five, six years ago. when He, he says, I'm just changing postcodes. I'm going from one dominion of earth to, Hallelujah! I'm going to heaven! Well, we're, I just can't wait to get there. I wonder if that's in the blinking of an eye. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that we are seated now in heavenly places in the throne with Yeshua HaMashiach. And it says that we have all... Inheritance. Mm -hmm. So we're made up of body, soul, and spirit. So what is sitting in the throne with Jesus? Our spirit. Amen. Ah, where's our flesh? I wonder where our flesh is. I wonder where, where our soul is. It says in the Word of God that the Father, the souls are His. Amen. Isn't that interesting? The souls are his, and he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he does not want anybody to snatch you out of his hand. Amen. Jesus said, I don't want nobody snatching me out of my hand. Mm -hmm. So the Father's love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. Jesus' love is unconditional. The Holy Spirit that resides inside you when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ is for everlasting. It's called apathonesco. In John 3.16, it says, you know, <laughs> everlasting life, that's apathonesco. Or everlasting or eternal damnation. Yeah. You make the choice tonight and tomorrow. Yes, we're having this is the uh, we're doing ten days of energized awe of in this conference of, for leaders around the world and here. And I'm excited what God's gonna do tonight. Because if you got some chains on you, if you're chained up, I want you to know the Lord is gonna bust them chains. He's going to bust them chains off you. What, are you. what are you tied up with? The blood of Jesus and the anointed, the Christ. It says in Isaiah 10, 27, it says the anointing, it says the fact, the anointing shall destroy Amen. the yoke of oppression. Are you, being, are you being oppressed in your mind? Are you being oppressed in your soul? Are you being oppressed in your flesh? Are you being oppressed in your spirit? All can, all, all can be free. In the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that devil, he's a sneaky guy. He just kind of shoots arrows at you and wears you down. Well, the blood of Jesus is Teflon. The devil can only get what you give him. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. If your soul is still tied to the things of the flesh, if you are still, when I, I'm going to use this word, if you are still prostituted, based on soulish items that you have more pleasure in than Him in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the way, you know, Robin put it today. The Church of Laodicea, 
They were a rich church. They didn't need anything. They had all kinds of money. They were lukewarm. They didn't need God. You can read that in Revelation chapter 3. Amen. The church of Laodicea. It says that God is going to spit you out. He's going to spit you out. Laodiceans, if you're so rich, it says it's easier for a rich person to go through the eye of the needle, a camel going through the eye of the needle, than you coming into everlasting life because you want to hold on to your possessions, your wealth. The wealth is in Him. Whatever, whatever wealth He gives you is to advance the kingdom of God on this earth and give you a wonderful life. And helping others. As he's helping you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Huh? If we have, we can give. If you don't have, well, the Lord says, I am going to bless you so that you have. I, go, I love you. I'm going to bless my children. Will I give you a snake? Will I give you a scorpion? Will I give you a rock? No, I'm going to give you the best. <clears throat> I just, I'm just going to give you the best. So we looked at the grave. So I'm going to start off with Romans chapter 6. We have a, uh, on our Holy Spirit Sands, I want you to know, you can go to our website on Holy Spirit Sands, and you can see the painting that's there of Jesus coming out of the water. It's Romans chapter 6, verse 4. I'm going to read some of this. Are you coming out of the water tonight? Are you going to come out of the water resurrection life? You can see the dove above, and then the Father, you can see the worst. This is my son, Ralph, whom I'm well pleased. Pick up your cross and follow me. This is my daughter who I'm well pleased. Corporal, pick up your cross and follow me. This is my daughter, Canelta. Pick up your cross and follow me. We need to come out of the water. When you look at that painting there, it shows that Jesus' feet are still nailed to the cross. And yet he's coming up. He's coming up out of the cross before he goes to the grave. It is already predestined. The Father had to turn away his head. Aloe, Aloe, Lama, Sebastian, You know, my God, my God, why do you forsake me? So the Father had to turn his head so 100% man, 100% God could die so that he could fulfill what the purpose was in the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ so the devil couldn't get it and neither did Peter in Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, when Jesus says, Satan, get behind me. You're not going to stop me from getting to the cross. It's not you. You're being a stumbling block. We cannot be a stumbling block. We need to be surrendered, as we heard today. We need to be servants of the living God. Serving Him in power. And in love and a sound mind, having an awesome fear unto him. So that's why I'm calling this conference 10 Days of Awe. And we have 24 sessions. We're at session number six. Six is the number of man. When Jesus committed his first miracle, he was forced into it because his mother Mary said, Do what he asks. Because they ran out of wine. Have you run out of wine? You've been part of, you run out of wine because the Lord has saved the best wine until now. And He's going to fill you up over the brim. Amen. He's going to fill you up over the brim. So here it says in Romans chapter 6, I'll start in verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Some of you guys figure you can keep on sinning because grace is going to get you through. You still will have a judgment day. Do you want to go eyeball to eyeball to Jesus with the fiery eyes and the hair that's all like this on judgment day? Or do you want to have a beautiful Jesus that we know has laughter? What is it you're going to choose? It's going to be based on what you do here. And it says whatever you've done, he's going to put into the fire and whatever is good will stay. Whatever is Whatever is, it's gone. So if you're doing it for yourself and your own ministry or for whatever it is, it's, it's, 
I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> how do you spell that in Liberia? <laughs> how do you spell that in Nigeria? <laughs> how do you spell that in Bangladesh? <laughs> how do you spell that in Fiji? Fiji. <laughs> it's grave clothes and they stink. You're holding on to a grave clothes. God said, give it to me. Why do you want to hold on to that stinky stuff? <clears throat> All right. It says, sin that grace may abound. Certainly not. This is verse 2. Certainly not. Shall, how shall we... It says, how... Excuse me. Certainly not. How shall we... I always have... I, my lips are... How shall we who died in to sin live any longer in it? Uh, I have it here in the ESV. Sorry. I, all right. Re, out of the ESV. Amber's <laughs> 2. It says, By no means, how can we who die to sin still live in it? I was reading out of the New King James. <clears throat> It's stinky. How do you live with it? I don't know about you, but if you have a 50-pound baby diaper on and it's full and pouring out the sides and you've been wearing it for 40 years, it stinks. The Lord says, I want to clean you up. You can't do it your way. You cannot walk in the desert for 40 years with loser's limp and saying only those who are 20 and under are going to get in the promised land. I don't think there's anybody in this room under 20, 20 or under. We have the blood. So it doesn't matter how old we are, we're going to the promises of God. Hallelujah? All right. Okay. And out of the ESV, so by no means, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Huh? A grave. See the grave? We are baptized into his death, into the grave. The same thing that, that Jesus went through, he went into the grave for three days. He walked around there. The light was walking around in the darkness. He was illuminating. What was that word that you used, Sandra? Infusion. He infused hell with his light. And the how oh, God but be in a bakaria. Can you imagine how beautiful the smell was in hell for three days? It wasn't it was like oh my the aroma of heaven. Okay. This is the verse four. We were buried. Therefore, with him, by baptism, into death. That's your call. You can lie down. We were buried with him by baptism into death. In order that Jesus, pardon me, in, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too walk in the newness of life. The grave can't hold you down there. You got to get up there. Get up there, Sarah. You got to do a jigga jigga. You the grave cannot hold you. You, you know, you can't hold you. Amen. They can't do it. Just keep it. Keep your eyes on that. You can't do it. You can't do it. I'm doing this out of favor for you. I'm doing this out of favor for you. <sighs> You see this chain? This chain was wrapped around you to put you in the grave. This chain was wrapped around you. Did you hear it? Hell shook. I'll do it one more time. Sarah, do you want to lie down there so I can throw this chain on you? Yes, thank you. Does anybody, do I have a volunteer to lie down here to, that these chains will break off and not hurt you? Ah! The grave, the 
chains will not hold you the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of what is happening here in verse 4. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, all those chains come off. We too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with Him in death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in the resurrection and the life like His. We who and know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. It only happens once. So if you have a, if you need to do the lift this chain and throw it up and come down and be done with it, there's a spot on there that you hit. Hallelujah. Death is over. It has no sting. Why are you pulling around a chain? Why are you pulling around a grave because of shame or guilt? You have been set free. The grave does not hold you. Come on up, ladies. It's time for you to lead us in worship. And I want you to know, CCLI, we have all the... That's why the, we were shut down in 247 locations. But I want you to know, CCLI has got us covered. And we have all rights for copyright license and for streaming plus license. They shut us down. I, I, I just want you to know, they made me continue to shut. We went through this before. But we have the license to do this. And we have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that nothing will hold us in the grave. And we will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ until all nations are saved. And no grave is going to hold anybody down. No chains are going to hold anybody down. Because it says in the word of God that all will have the opportunity to hear the gospel and come into a place of freedom. And the grave will not hold them back. Amen. For, the, for the death he died, he died to sin. Once for all. But the life he lives, he lives in Adonai, hell him. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to Adonai, hell him, through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ our Savior. Come on, let's worship him in spirit and in truth. I want you to know, there's going to be a few more people may come give their hearts to the Lord or they want to be freed of chains. You can pick this chain up. All I want you to do is hit the spot because I don't want to damage the scarf and don't hit the roof. I hope that illustrative sermon has shaken you right down. Because this is the Feast of Tabernacles. We started off with Rosh Hashanah. We went into the, the trumpets. Feast of trumpets. We've gone into the ten days of awe as far as the feasts. And now it's the Sukkoth being in his dwelling place. And in his dwelling place there is no death. There is only resurrection life for those who have come and said the grave has no sting because I believe in the resurrection and the life of Jesus Christ. And his words say, you shall not die. Let's worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Tanelta. Bless you, Corporal. Amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Holy be in Shatake. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hold up, Shatake. Set up the beast to like the dead stage. Moved up. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Uh, I said we put ourselves in an attitude of praise and worship unto the Lord. He said in His Word that we should worship Him in truth and in spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, hello, declare. The glory of the risen Who can compare? Who can compare? 
singing together? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Oh, which one are you going to do now? Oh, uh, okay. Which one? John 12, 26, where my servant is, so shall I also be. 
And then Adonai Elohim says, those who serve my son, I kiss praskino, praskino, praskinua. There's a way it says in Greek, but he kisses the hand of those who serve the son in such beautiful worship. I want to be, and Jesus wants to be. The Holy Spirit wants to be. The Father is omnipresent, and he's saying, I am, and I be with you. Hallelujah. So with that, I'm going to ask, you know, uh, one of a, an apostolic leader from the United States, Resurrection Life Ministries USA is coming up with some fire. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I want you to know Stacy Lunsford. She has a wonderful ministry called Rise and Shine in Jesus Ministries. It's not about anything else. It's only about Jesus. So I want you to know, I set this up for you, Stacy. You got the Word of God. Okay. You got the anointing oil. Amen. And you got the whole world here. And most of the world is listening to you because we know at least a million people are going to get this. Amen. This one. And the grave and the, is over here. Yes. And the chains are on top of the grave. Yes. But you have resurrection life. Resurrection And you life. are going to bring the fire. So I thank you, Lord. Bring the fire. Bring the fire. And Hallelujah. wherever you're going to be, I want you to know we want to be with you too. Yes. At Resurrection Life Ministries around the world. You are a Rabboni teacher. You are an evangelist. Thank you, Jesus. You have a pastor's heart. Thank you. You are a prophet mm -hmm. and an apostle. Apostolic fire Thank you, is alive in Stacy. Mm. Mm. Preach. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. The song was saying, I want to be where you are. And in Exodus, the 33rd chapter, Moses, he asked God's presence to go before him. Because if God's presence didn't go before him, he wasn't going to go. So I thank God for his presence tonight. Amen. And we want to give him all the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we bless your holy name. We magnify you and we glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we commit this message into your hands. And we thank you for spiritual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you for letting me decrease so that you may increase. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to see. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We want to see the fire come out of them lips. I have a song in my heart. And it says, I got J-O-Y. Joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. I got J O Y, joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace. I got P E A C E. Peace in the Holy Ghost. Come on. I got P E A C E. C E peace in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil, don't let the devil steal your peace. Don't let the devil steal your peace. Don't let the devil steal your peace. Peace in the Holy Ghost. Love, I got L O V E. Love, love in the Holy Ghost. I got L O V E. Love, love in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil. Don't let the devil steal your love. Don't let the devil steal your love. Don't let the devil steal your love. Love in the Holy Ghost. Hope. 
I got H O P E hope, hope in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I got H O P E hope, hope in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil, don't let the devil steal your hope. Don't let the devil steal your hope. Don't let the devil steal your hope. Hope in the Holy Ghost. Peace. I got P E A C E. I got L O V E. Love. H O P E. Hope. Hope in the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil. Don't let the devil steal your hope. Don't let the devil steal your hope. Don't let the devil steal your hope. Hope in the Holy Ghost. Woo! Yeah, Holy Ghost is fire. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you all for joining me with that song. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Whatever you are going through, let God know that he is still God. Sometimes we got to open up our mouth and give God the praise. Yes. And to, tonight I'm going to count the three. And on the count of three, we're going to release the Ruah praise. And the Ruah praise is to split the ears of the enemy wide open. It's to cause the enemy to back up off of you. And if you do the Karah praise and you turn around, the enemy got to back up off of you on the north, the south, the east, and the west. So... Joshua and the Israelites, when they walked around the walls of Jerusalem, of Jericho, they were quiet. But when Joshua gave the command to shout, that was the Ruah praise. And the Ruah praise caused the walls to fall down. Amen. Now, when Apostle Ray dropped those chains <laughs> on the coffin over there, some chains broke. But we're going to release this Ruah praise in case there's any residue. We, we want to get it all. Hallelujah. Anybody with me tonight? We come to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On the count of three, we're going to do the Ruah praise. And it's to shout as loud as you can. And for those of you that have your shofar, let it blow. Hallelujah. And if you're watching, we want you to shout with us on the count of three because God is going to cause the walls to fall down all around you. God is going to cause the chains to break. Hallelujah. So on the count of three, one, two, three, shout! Oh! Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Woo! Shake hell! Hallelujah. Hell is loose. Jesus. Shake hell! Hell is loose. Jesus. What you bind on earth, Woo. you loosen from heaven. Yes. Heaven is loosened upon all hell. Yes. Any hell in you? Well, if you're going through hell, don't stop. If you're going through hell, don't stop. If you're going through yes. hell, don't stop. Heaven's coming in, loosening you free, bringing those chains off of you today. Oh. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 That's Hallelujah. What's happening here? To God be the glory. Ooh. Hallelujah. I feel young. Jesus. That praise is wonderful. My message tonight is the benefits of crying out to God. Amen. And Amen. the praise that we just released is for everyone that's been crying. And everyone, you want to cry, but you, you don't have it in you any longer to cry because you've just been on the battlefield and it's been fight after fight and trial after trial, test after test, and you're feeling weary. Well, we just tore down some walls for you tonight. So I want to do a re recap from yesterday because Pastor Ray he talked about removing barriers. And he said that God wanted to remove some barriers in our lives. And the things that was distracting us, he wanted them out of the way so that we would be in position to love God and to spend quality time with God. Amen. He talked about an orphan spirit. And I want to highlight some of the things that he highlighted yesterday because those are some of the things that make us cry. And he talked about attacks on the mind and struggles with abandonment, struggles with rejections from past hurts and disappointments. And for those of you that didn't hear uh, Pastor Ralph yesterday, we encourage you to listen to yesterday's um, broadcast. He mentioned struggles with rejection and rejection from hurts from the past. And past disappointments. Anybody ever had a disappointment? Anybody ever felt rejected? Anybody ever felt like with feelings of abandonment, isolation, and feeling lonely? The benefits of crying out to God. Woo! As I meditated on the message and all of the rejection and an abandonment, David was standing out to me in the word of God. So we're going to take a little journey with his life. And David struggled with um, attacks on his mind. He experienced abandonment. He experienced rejection. And for a season, King Saul was after David. And David ran for his life. And why did he run for his life? Well, King Saul was jealous. And he was envious of David because David killed 10,000 and Saul killed a thousand. And so the women, they were praising David. And so King Saul got jealous and envious and David was on the run because he wanted to kill him. And David also ran for his life. Now, the scripture for that is 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter. I'm not going to go there, but I am going to give you some scriptures. And I'm going to ask you to be patient with me as I give this background information. So David also ran for his life when his son Absalom took over the kingdom. Amen. That was a huge conspiracy. And I want you to bookmark Psalm 64 because we're going to go there tonight. When David was running from Absalom, Absalom openly committed adultery with David's concubine in the public. And that was a sign that he was going to be the king. It was part of the great takeover. And this embarrassed David. It caused great shame and humiliation. And it caused him 
to collect tears from the situation he was already going through with Saul. And now he's running for his life from his son um, Absalom. And I have a question for you tonight. Can you imagine the defeat, the despair, or the discouragement that David felt as he ran away from the king that he loved and honored and served with a spirit of excellence? Amen. So we're talking about the benefits of crying out to God. So some of the things that I'm going to bring out right now is the tears we cry from betrayal. Because David loved King Saul. All he wanted to do was serve Saul. When the enemy was coming, he warned Saul. The enemy is coming, Saul. We got to get ready to fight. All he wanted to do was his job. He was a soldier. He was a warrior. He was also the leader of praise and worship. We've been saying the camels are coming. But David was like, the enemy is coming, Saul. But Saul... He disrespected David. He disrespected the authority that God gave to David. He disrespected the authority that he gave to David as being head of his army. So have you ever cried out to God because of disrespect and dishonor? That will make you feel so unworthy. And the spirit of discouragement will come in. So that chain represents the spirit of discouragement tonight. Okay? And we're going to deal with that because we're going to break every chain. Tasha Cobb sing a song. And I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains breaking. And the chain of discouragement has to go in Jesus' name. So jealousy from Saul caused David because David killed 10,000. Hatred from Absalom because David failed to discipline his son Ammon, Amnon after he raped his sister Tamar. So because David failed to discipline his children, he experienced a lot of heartache, a lot of disappointment. And as we know, David was a man after God's own heart. And no matter what he did, he always repented and went to God and said, I'm sorry, created me a clean heart. Like Psalms 51 and verse 10, we went over that the other day. Mm -hmm. And this message is also connected to my first message because we're going to be dealing with matters of the heart, even though we're learning about the benefits of crying out to God. So David was in great distress. David... David experienced, that's better, yeah. David experienced mental anguish as he cried out to God in Psalm 61. So I want you to go there with me right now because that is our foundational scripture. <clears throat> Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Yeah. Can I read it one more time? Yeah. From the ends of the earth I will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me. To the rock that is higher than I. And David goes on to say. For thou has been a shelter for me. A strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. Pause. And think about that. For thou O oh God has heard my vows. Excuse me. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So 
will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. So we opened up with the praise. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Beautiful smile. So we opened up with a praise. But in this psalm, David started out crying out to God. Remember, he was in distress. He was experiencing mental anguish. The attacks on his mind. The mind-binding spirits. Anybody being attacked in your mind tonight? Because we're going to destroy and annihilate every mind-binding spirit. Sometimes we experience a wandering mind, wandering thoughts. Right in the middle of the service, you're trying to concentrate in the enemy of sin and intrusion to your mind. Take a moment. You don't have to say it out loud, but underneath your breath, the blood of Jesus, I reject this thought. I will not entertain it. You are not going to cause trouble tonight. If you like playing baseball, guess what? The enemy send those thoughts you got to hit it out the ballpark. Don't, yeah. don't catch it. Send it back to the sender. Amen. So hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. What is causing you to cry tonight? Or what caused you to cry yesterday? What caused you to cry last year? What, are, what is the source of your tears? That has silenced your praise. How did the enemy steal your voice? How did he steal your power. In your authority. When you said. I will trust in the Lord. With my whole heart. And lean not into my own understanding. In all my ways. I will acknowledge God. And he will direct my path. How can the enemy steal our voice when we say we're putting our trust in God? Amen. The disciples was on the ship with Jesus. They just learned some very valuable lessons. Watched Jesus perform many miracles. But the storm wind started blowing. And the waves started crashing. And fear trickled in. And they lost their voice. They lost their power and they lost their authority. But the good news is it was temporary because they went down below and they called on Jesus. And Jesus came up and he said, oh, ye of little faith. So I want to let you know it's okay to have faith disengagements from time to time because it's part of the process of being processed. Just like we grow in our relationship with God, when we came to Christ, we were babies. We were newborn babies. Amen. As you drink that milk, let me tell you, it's going to strengthen you. Amen. And as you mature in the word of God, you are going to get stronger. Amen. And those little things that the little foxes do, you know, when they run up the vines to cause trouble in your life. As a baby, we're going to cry. And we're going to question things. But as we get stronger in the Lord, see, we must learn how to apply the word to our lives. And Pastor Ray gave the example, the life application. We could read the word all day long. Sometimes I listen to the word on my phone. I can listen to it all day long. But if I don't apply it to my life, it serves no purpose. It has no value. I must apply this word to my life, Sarah. Exactly. So what do we do when we don't know what to do? The disciples didn't know how to calm the storm. David didn't know how to calm the storm that was raging within him. So he cried out to God. From the ends of the earth, oh God, I cry out to thee. My heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So we must understand, we must humble ourselves. We are not higher than God. But you know what? We need to roll our sleeves up. Enough is enough. Aren't you tired of being defeated by the enemy? Yes. It is time to roll our sleeves up and fight 
with the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Now, what is the stronghold in your life? Because David's stronghold was jealousy, envy, and strife. But I also want to acknowledge that David opened up some doors. Amen. So when Absalom asserted his authority, and, and I call it the big takeover, because when he took over his father's kingdom, he participated in an open sin, but it was also part of the bloodline and the generational curses. Because David sinned with Bathsheba. And although he repented, he didn't pull that thing up at the root. So abstinence doesn't mean deliverance. And I'm not talking about sex, even though it pertains to that. But whatever we're dealing with, we have to deal with the root issues. So everything that was planted by the enemy, but not by God, we got to go in and we got to tear it up. Amen. And you know what? We can't go tiptoeing through the, top, through the tulips. We got to go walking. With power and authority. Amen. Knowing who we are. Because we're taking back territory tonight. That the enemy has stolen from us. From your current tears. From your past tears. From your tears from childhood. Every area of your life. Where the enemy has caused you to cry. God is going to release prophetic instructions. To show you what to do. Amen. He's going to empower you tonight to take back your voice, to take back your power, and to take back your authority. And believe it or not, we did it already when we released that shout. And with the blowing of the shofars, God already did it. So we need to come into agreement with God's word and what God said. <clears throat> so the benefits of crying out to God. First, I have to ask a question. Are you overwhelmed tonight? So the first question is, are you overwhelmed tonight? But then, are you overwhelmed about something else that pertains to something else, somebody else? Are you overwhelmed by what's happening in your city? Are you overwhelmed about what's happening in your family? Are you overwhelmed with what's happening in Liberia? Are you overwhelmed... Pastor Ralph was the state of emergency that we are in with spiritual leaders. Amen. What are you overwhelmed about? Because when I spoke the other night, we talked about Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, he wanted to restore the waste places. So I believe that those things that we overwhelmed about, if we take our eyes off our own things that we overwhelmed with and say, God... I want to bring this to the table tonight because I don't want to focus so much on my issues. I want to focus on some of the things that are on your heart and some of the things that are on your mind. Amen. And then the next thing is, do you hear the cries of God's people that are hurting? Because guess what? They are overwhelmed. We have human trafficking. We have small kids that's being abducted. They crying in the back of trucks, trains, buses, being kidnapped right under our nose on the border. What about our governments and the spirit of corruption? There are so many areas that we have to be overwhelmed. But we're so busy caught up in our own issues and looking at what the devil is doing. And we glorify him too much. We give him too much credit. Amen. Stop talking about what the devil is doing. Stop talking about your problems, your tests, and your tribulations. And start telling your problems what God is doing. Amen. Because God is still on the throne. God is in control. In Isaiah 54, he says, Surely they shall gather together, but not by me. Amen. And he said, They shall fall for thy name's sake. So Saul and Absalom, although they pursued David, later on, both of them fell. And Saul lost his kingdom. And Absalom ended up dying. So God doesn't want us to die a premature death. 
He doesn't want us to lose our kingdom. Excuse me. So I want everyone to repent of any situation or circumstances where you cause someone else to be overwhelmed. Pause and think about that. Because we all have caused harm, hurt to someone else. David was betrayed. Maybe you betrayed someone. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. I want you to take some time tonight before you go to bed. And whatever it is, whatever you did, whatever you said, that you know caused someone to be overwhelmed, to experience mental anguish or distress. Repent in the name of Jesus and let it go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Tonight is no more room for I want to say I'm sorry. Tonight is a night to put it down there and say, I'm sorry, and be done with it. Because your refusal to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, is keeping those chains wrapped around you. And some, the chain is wrapped around your neck. Suffocating. Can't breathe. Spirit of Python, sucking the life out of you. Not so much the chain, but I want you to see the chain as a snake. Serpentine spirits will cause you to cry out to God. BerkeleyWellbeing.com says, Feeling overwhelmed happens when you are overcome with intense emotions. These can be negative, such as stress and anger, or positive, such as joy and gratitude. So being overwhelmed is not always sad or bad. You know, I'm overwhelmed right now because the presence of the Lord is here. And there's a song that says the presence of the Lord is here. But when you know what you know what you know, there's no reason to be afraid. Amen. Amen. But again, it is a learning curve and it's how we grow in the word of God. So. Constantly feeling overwhelmed can have negative consequences like feeling unhappy, losing confidence in yourself, and having difficulty with making decisions. This opens the door to the spirit of heaviness, and I want to ask you to go with me to Isaiah 61 and verse 3. And then we're going to go back to Psalm 61 for a moment. And I pray that this message is blessing you. Amen. Isaiah 61, and I might as well start at verse 1. Because we need to understand the power and authority that we have. And Pastor Ray, thank you for mentioning Matthew 18 and 18 because we're going to go there as well. So is everyone there? Yep. Yeah. Isaiah 61 and verse 3. I mean, verse one, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. God wants to restore our joy tonight. And somebody, you have not been crying out to God. Because someone told you we shouldn't cry. And especially the men, you've been told all your life, men don't cry. Suck it up. We have to be strong. It's okay to cry. Amen. Amen. Crying captures God's attention. All throughout the Old Testament, whenever the Israelites cried out to God, God showed up. So the spirit of heaviness we're going to connect that. God bless you, sir. We're going to connect that with the spirit of distress, the spirit of despair, 
the spirit of discouragement. So just imagine I'm a tree and I got several branches. The strong man, the tree, the strong man is the tree of heaviness. But my branches, this is heavy, this is despair, this is discouragement. So my other branches is going to be stress, anxiety, worry, discouragement, hopelessness, suicidal thoughts, suicidal tendencies, unclean spirit, foul spirit. It's everything doom and gloom, everything like I'm standing up straight. But all of these things come on the tree and we start sinking and we start getting lower because it's heavy and it's weighing you down. So the things that make you want to cry, when you cry, it's releasing these heavy burdens off of you. And guess what? Sometimes we don't know the words to say. The pain is so deep and you just cry. Anybody ever moan? Yeah. Sometimes I moan. I'll be like, mm, God, I can't find the words to say. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit interprets Every single tear. Amen. Amen. So the words that you can't speak. And sometimes it's quietly in our heart that we even cry silently. The tears won't even fall down our face. But inside your heart. And Pastor Leslie last week. When she stood right here. And she started weeping. And I started weeping. Because God's heart was hurting. Mm -hmm. And his heart is hurting now. Because too many people are carrying around burdens that they don't have to carry. And God wants us to release every heavy burden. The benefits of crying out to God. I want your confidence to be in him and knowing that he will hear you and he will answer you. And he will answer according to his will, his plans, and his purpose for your life. So with his answer, sometimes he's going to say yes. Sometimes he's going to say no. And sometimes he's going to say wait. And if you're like me, some of the times when he said wait, I still cry. Why God? Why I got to wait? Anybody want to be real and be honest with me? We know we question God. Why I have to wait? You said if I ask anything in your name in John 14, 14, you would do it. So why do I have to wait? Anybody ever been pursued by King Saul? You know, the spirit of Saul is running rampant in the body of Christ. The spirit of Saul is causing many Davids, many people that are gifted, called, chosen by God to run and hide in the caves. Don't you know that they are crying and that God understands the source of their tears? So is, is King Saul, the spirit of King Saul, those leaders that are operating in this spirit, are they really getting away with what they're doing? No. But do we focus on that? No. We go to God and we tell on them, God, I'm trying to use these spiritual gifts that you gave me and King Saul is, is on my spiritual leader and he backing me off and I'm running away and I, I, I'm giving it to you. I had an opportunity to cut off the corner of his mantle when I was in the cave. And I could have like really operated in the spirit of pride. But because I fear you, God, I didn't, you know, I did cut the corner. But I could have killed him. But I love you, God, and I'm going to respect you. But I'm crying out to you from the bitterest part of my heart. I'm crying out to you. My heart is overwhelmed. How can I operate? In the spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. How can I be the evangelist that you called me to be. When they rejected me in the church. Mm -hmm. How can I be the prophet that you called me to be. When they take my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Shh. Don't say that. We don't talk like that in here. The benefits of crying out to God 
is that God will fight your battle for Amen. you. Amen. You don't have to fight in this battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. So go with me back to Isaiah 61 and verse 3. Because we want to bind the spirit of heaviness tonight. Amen. There's too many people that are bound by the spirit of heaviness. And they've been crying out to God. But one of the biggest jobs we have as intercessors is to look past ourselves, to look past our family members, and stand in the gap for other people. Do you hear the cries of other people? Because in um, John 17, Jesus taught us how to pray for everybody. He left nothing uncovered. So we should not be focusing on us all of the time. So based on Matthew 18, 18, it says, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We're going to bind the spirit of heaviness tonight. Mm -hmm. And we're going to loose, and it's all in the word, so I'm not making up anything. Y'all follow along with me. We're going to loose the oil of joy for mourning, and we're going to loose the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and the beauty for ashes. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for those that are bound by the spirit of heaviness and all of the cohorts that work with the spirit of heaviness. We thank you, Father, for the source of their hurt and their pain. And we thank you for unplanning everything that was planted but not by you. We bind and we render the spirit of heaviness and all of the fruit on its tree powerless tonight. It's not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit, O oh God, that we take away the legal authority that they had through whatever door was open. And we close those doors shut by the blood and fire of God. And we loose the garment of praise, hallelujah. We loose the oil of joy and the spirit of gladness. Now somebody may not feel it. Father, and that's okay. It doesn't mean it did not happen. Supernaturally, we thank you and we praise you. And we seal this prayer with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, giving you all the honor, giving you all the glory, giving you all of the praise. Amen. So for those of you that prayed along with me, it's really that simple. The word of God is not all mystical and spooky. We just need to learn how to apply it to our lives. So we're talking about the benefits of crying out to God. Please go with me to Exodus, the second chapter, verse 23 and 20, 23 to 25. Which chapter? Exodus, the second chapter, verse 23 through 25. And we're talking about the benefits of crying out to God. And for those of you that just came in, um, our foundational scripture was in Psalm 61. So, and it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning. We just talked about groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the process of time. This is prophetic information. It's not providing instructions, it's providing information. And then in verse 2, it says, and God heard their groaning. If you don't open up your mouth, how is God going to hear you? Amen. Now, we talked about the silent tears and the silent cries. God can read our heart, and he knows what we need. But he wants us to open up our mouth sometimes and let him know what we need help with. And sometimes we simply need to invite him in and let him know that we trust him. And it's those things, um, the other day we was talking about the heart and how the heart is cut in half and then um, cut that half and so it was four compartments. There's so many compartments in our hearts. And those things that are hidden way in the back, 
You know, like on your jeans, in your jean pocket, you got a pocket inside of the pocket. Y'all know what I'm talking about? We don't put much in there. But stuff that's hidden in that double jean pocket, God wanted. Mm -hmm. Stuff that's hidden in your junk drawer all the way in the back, God want that stuff. All of the things that is attached to something that caused great sorrow, hurt, pain, disappointment. God want to cut it off tonight. Every soul tie that had you connected to your past. Every mind binding spirit through demonic manipulation. Have your mind racing going around in circles. God want to cut cords tonight. Diabolical cords. He's going to disconnect you from people, places, and things that serve no purpose and have no value. Amen. And when he does, do not go back. Amen. Somebody Amen. that's been making you cry because I prayed before I, I, I knew I was coming. I already prayed today. There are some people that are walking away from you right now in the name of Jesus. And don't you dare beg God to have him send them back. And don't you go back if they come back. Because some of you, you're going to be, I'm going to look right out to this audience. Some of you, they're going to come back. And it's going to be with lies, deception, and falsehood. And the spirit of entrapment is attached to it. So don't believe the lies. Amen. The song says, don't believe the hype. Mm -hmm. So God want to break chains tonight. And when we break chains, we have to be honest about who we are, where we are, what we did, what we said, what happened to us. And listen, God is concerned about what happened to us. Going back to um, our, found, our main characters was David, Absalom, and, and Saul. So God was concerned about what King Saul did to David. He was concerned about what Absalom did to David. But he was more concerned about David's response. Amen. Amen. What was David going to do? And God is concerned about your response. Amen. What are you going to do with the betrayal? With the, re with the rejection? Those areas where the mind binding spirits have your mind all tied up. Your thoughts are not right. It's affecting your world view. It's affecting your Bible view. You don't even take God at his word anymore because you're so confused. And so you're lining up with the world and the world views and the lust and the cares of the world. And all of these commercials that's lying to you on TV, releasing subliminal messages. Yeah. Uproot and destroy every assignment of the enemy. Amen. Sometimes we need to turn the television off. But going back to the text we just read, God heard the groaning and he remembered the covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and he had respect unto them. God is looking upon us tonight. God has respect unto us and that means the favor of God is upon our lives. It doesn't matter what happened, what we're going through. We have to know who we are and whose we are. And it's okay to cry. Exodus 14 and 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. So I'm just trying to give you some examples of people that cried. And immediately after they cried unto the Lord, they began to mumble and grumble. If you read through um, all of Exodus 14, they began to mumble and grumble against Moses. Like, why did you bring us here? And now we're in this situation. Beware of mumbling and grumbling. That's a different kind of cry. God doesn't want us to complain, to be bitter, and to fault find. They was fault finding. They was blame shifting. Moses, Moses, why did you do this? And then in the heat of the moment, when God told Moses to hit the rock, it's not in this story, but he told him to hit the rock. I mean, you know, he hit the rock. God said, talk to the rock. Yeah. So remember the other night I talked about irritation, frustration, and exasperation. We can't allow what people do or say to move us. Because that one moment where we choose to disobey God, 
whole plan changed. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't get a chance to enter into the promised land. And the things that the enemy is using to make you cry is to, to make you miss the things that God has prepared for you. And it's to steal your destiny. But some tears, some, some things is for God to get the glory Amen. out of your life. Can I insert a little, just... Sure. What are my pills? Well, yeah. I keep forgetting your hair. My friend. <laughs> yeah, just uh, when you were talking there about uh, the grumbling and complaining, mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 77, verse 3. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Yes. Complaining destroy, breaks down your spirit, breaks down faith and hope, and without it, you can't please God. Without it, you can't call Him for help. No crumbling and complaining. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that is lined up with everything that we're talking about because we're dealing with being overwhelmed. Thank you, Pastor Ralph. Yes. Yes. So Jeremiah tells us that when we call unto God, that he will answer us. That's the best kind of crying, Amen. right? We know what the results are going to be. So Jeremiah 33 and 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So the benefits of crying out to God is really seeking his guidance. Because through our tears, which sometimes we can't articulate, but the Holy Spirit is interpreting, and so God is going to lead us in his word. So I want to give you some guiding scriptures. Psalms 5 and 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Psalms 25 and verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation and on thee do on thee do I wait all the day. Amen. Psalms 27 and verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Mm. In Psalms 143 and verse 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of the uprightness. The land of uprightness. So the benefits of crying out to God is receiving guidance from the Lord, spiritual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So it will guide us into pleasant paths with um Psalms 23 and verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Mm -hmm. When we seek God, when we cry out to God, one of the benefits is help with making decisions. Mm -hmm. Psalms 25 and verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Seeking God, we also receive wise counsel. Mm -hmm. Psalm 73 and verse 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we hear counsel from God with a still, small voice. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 30 and verse 21. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk. Ye in it. Amen. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. So, what about those moments of uncertainty when we're standing at the crossroad and we don't know which way to go? God, I'm undecided right now. Mm -hmm. I'm in a very difficult situation and I feel the pain and the uncomfortable. Feelings like help me decide which way to go. There's an answer in his word in Isaiah 42 and verse 16. 
He says, and I will bring the blind by a way that they know not, that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. So those are some nuggets for you to take with you. And as we go back to Psalm 61 real quick. Psalm 61, Psalm 61, yes. We're going back to our first scripture and verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So we talked about seeking God for guidance. We talked about crying out to God. So now we're going to talk about God being our rock. And I'm coming to the end of my message. So in Deuteronomy 32... Verse 41. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32. I didn't type that one out. You know how sometimes people lose their spot and they get nervous. I say, well, if it happened, I'm just going to take my time and find out where I need to be. <laughs> you said 32? Yes. Yes, 32. And verse 41. And that is not the right scripture. So we're going to go. Sorry about that. Second Samuel. First Samuel, verse Second, first Samuel, second chapter, second verse. First Samuel. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Thank you, Lord. One moment. Is God your rock tonight? Yes. He's our refuge and a present help in the time of trouble. Oh, it was Deuteronomy 32 and verse 4. That's what I didn't have right. So we're still in 32. In verse 4, God is our rock. And David said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Then after that, we're going to go to 1 Samuel. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 4 says, he is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Amen. Amen. So I want to just give scriptures to support what we're saying. What we're talking about. And let's go to 1 Samuel the first chapter. Now this is one of my most favorite cries in the whole Bible besides uh, the prophetic cries of Christ when David cried out and said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And then Jesus cried out in the New Testament and he cried as well. So how many of you know the story about Hannah? Mm -hmm. Hannah cried out to God from the bitterest part of her soul. And that's because her adversary Penina, she provoked her day in and day out and she bothered her one we coming back to jealousy envy and be angry she was upset with uh hannah because ilkanah loved her more 
but she was the first wife. And Peninnah was the second wife. And the job of the second wife was to have the children. But Ilkanai, being the godly man that he was, he took care of his family and his children. But Peninnah teased Hannah because she didn't have children. But she wanted to like make her feel bad. And she did a really good job with it. So Hannah cried out to God from the bitterest part of her soul. And we're going to pick up at verse... Eight. And this is going to be a very good ending to this message tonight. Because it's going to lead us into the altar of comfort. Amen. Amen. So 1 Samuel, the first chapter, verse 8. Then said Ilkanai, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. So there we have that crying unto God again. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am the, a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. The benefits of crying out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. We, but we, we, that grief falls under the spirit of heaviness. Mm -hmm. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition and thou hast, that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to her house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Amen. The benefits of crying out to God. What is the bitterest part of your soul tonight? What is that one thing that is really, really causing you great sorrow and pain? Who is provoking you like Peninnah provoked Hannah? What is the lesson that God is teaching you through this? What is your attitude? What does your countenance look like? After Hannah prayed, her countenance changed. Amen. How many of you, when you're feeling a little down and weary and you press? You know, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Our flesh don't feel like it. But you know, Pastor Ralph, if we don't do this thing, that heaviness is going to wear us down. And we press in and we feel in a certain way. Look, but you finish praying, your countenance change. And you feel happy and you feel that relief in the spirit. Well, Il Kanai, I want to talk about the altar of comfort. Because he comforted his wife. You see, he understood back then in the Bible days, if you didn't, if you wasn't like able to carry a child, you was an outcast. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They looked down on you. They talked about you. They treated you bad. And Il cannot understood that she was more hurt and wounded that she couldn't give him a child than she was about being provoked by Penina. Mm -hmm. But she didn't take matters into her own hands either. She understood that the battle was the Lord's. She could have gotten to an argument with Peninnah. But she didn't. She cried. 
So whoever is provoking you, go to God and tell on them. Because, and don't be distracted by telling on them. Because she didn't even mention anything about Peninnah. She brought her own issues to the table to God. And now I say, you know, we cry in our heart. She didn't say it out loud, but God answered her. So what God was showing to me, Ilkanah was such a loving husband and he was attentive to her. He was also emotionally available to her. And the altar of comfort is when we go to God in prayer, as God comforts us, our countenance will be altered. God is a God of comfort. He is the giver of comfort. Yes, God uses people to comfort us, but all comfort comes from God. David experienced many trials and tribulations. And as we read through the book of Psalms, he cried out to God on several occasions and then God comforted him. So God wants us to establish an altar of comfort. And we do that through prayer. We do that through standing on his word. He is the God of comfort. He wants us to get to know him as the God of comfort. So come to him. Cast your cares upon him. And tell him what you're dealing with. So 1 Corinthians um, chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Christ's words brings comfort. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. Luke 7, 13. As members of the body of Christ, we are charged to comfort and edify one another. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Where com wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even, also, even as also ye do. So verse first Samuel first chapter verse nine through eleven. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord and wept. Sometimes people are going to see you crying and they're not going to understand your tears. And some will false accuse you just like Eli the priest did. Don't be distracted by their responses or their words. Just keep it going. So out of the whole chapter with 1 Samuel, God spoke to me about an altar of prayer, an altar of testimony, an altar of sanctification, an altar of possibilities, and an altar of comfort. So the altar of possibilities was when Hannah went to God and prayed from the bitterest part of her soul. It's a possibility that God will hear me. She wasn't sure. So it was a possibility. But God is a God of possibilities. Things that are impossible with man are possible with God. So could it be possible that God want to release some, some benefits to you? Because of the tears that you've been crying. What are the items that you have before the Lord? Do you have a book of possibilities? Is it possible I could get married one day? Is it possible that the things that God said in his word can come true? Is it possible that I could go ye therefore into all the world? What are you believing God for? How are you going to allow your tears to work for you after tonight? How are you going to use your crying out to God to benefit his plans and his purpose versus it becoming a rescue for you out of the boat that's in the midst of the storm? Ask God, what do you want me to learn from this storm, this test, this trial, this betrayal? this rejection, this isolation and abandonment. And for those of you that have a prophetic anointing upon your life, guess what? You're going to be isolated. You're going to deal with the abandonment. You're going to deal with the rejection. And bringing it back to what Pastor Ralph mentioned yesterday, all of these are barriers 
that the enemy used to prevent us from coming into the full knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus. But the devil is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And he works with the spirit of robbery using King Saul's, losing the, using the spirit of Absalom. And I want to touch base on that for a moment. Be careful of who you connect yourself with. The spirit of Absalom, the spirit of Korah, rebellious spirits. Operating in the spirit of haughtiness. Rose up against authority. Didn't appreciate where they was at. Pastor Ralph, your message really blessed me yesterday. And he asked the question and he said, are you, how are you respecting the thorn that God placed in your side? Can we apply that to Absalom and to Korah tonight? Because they disrespected the thorn. They thought they could do it better. Korah thought he could do it better than Moses. But he influenced over 400, 4,000, and I don't know the exact number, leaders, spiritual leaders, to turn against Moses. He cried, but it was a bad cry. And it caused the entire earth to open up and swallow them all alive. Amen. So we have positive cries and we have negative cries. I'll be back for the negative cries. But we don't want to find ourselves in that category. But beware of the spirit of haughtiness. Many people are about to be promoted. And you're going to be promoted in the natural, but also in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Beware of the spirit of Haman as well. Mm -hmm. Haman abused his authority. And he caused many people to cry. Including Mordecai. Who revealed the plan to Esther. And Esther declared a fast. And asked them to pray. And she said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to go before the king. Somebody is crying tonight. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to decree a fast? And pray? Are you willing to go in a little further? Because as I close, Jesus cried in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went in a little further and he sweat drops, which was like blood. Yes. Are you willing to go in a little further? Yes. Do you hear the cries of God's people? Do you hear the cries of the people that Jesus took up on the cross with him? For you, for me, for everybody. When they pierced them in his hands and they pierced them in his feet, the weight of Jesus shifted to his feet. And he was just there. <sighs> but he was having a hard time breathing. And he took on Everything that we talked about tonight. He was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. And the chastisement mm -hmm. of our peace is upon him. Mm -hmm. We don't have to grieve unnecessarily. Mm. We don't have to mourn. Jesus did it all on the cross. So as we cry out to God tonight, let's make a decision to stop pinning Jesus to the cross over and over again. Because we won't come into agreement that he already took care of it. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you with a bowed head and a humble heart. We thank you and we praise you for the benefits of crying out to you. We thank you, Father, for letting this word fall on good soil, the soil of our hearts. Let it get rooted and grounded. We thank you that you are our anchor. We thank you for the chains that have been broken. Excuse me. We thank you for those that received instructions tonight on how to cry out to you, even with those painful things, Lord, that's difficult. 
And we thank you that you are the God of comfort. And we thank you for comforting your people tonight. We thank you for releasing your mantle of peace. Your peace that passes all understanding. Father, we bind the spirit of fear, anxiety, worry. And we release the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And we thank you for the helmet of salvation. Some, the battle has been so rough, God. They have not put on the whole armor of God. But tonight, we put on the whole armor of God. And we thank you for the readjustment mm -hmm. of this helmet of salvation. We thank you for some. They got busted in the head, God. And they came loose. But we tightened the belt, the buckle underneath their chins. And we thank you for divine alignment. We thank you, Father God, for letting this mind be in them, which is also in Christ Jesus. We bind, we break, and we destroy the powers of darkness that's been operating in their minds through mind-binding spirits, through demonic manipulation. We break in pieces, oh God, the spirit of oppression. Yes. We break in pieces, oh God, the spirit of witchcraft. Yes. Off of your people. Yes, Jesus. Father we ask in the name of Jesus. That you will disconnect. Your people from every diabolical cord. Mm -hmm. Every soul tie. Yes. Everything that had them connected in the second heaven. Where the enemy has been plotting. Scheming. Mm -hmm. Devising wicked devices against them. But I place you in remembrance of your word. In Psalms 21 and verse 11. And God, I place a demand on your word. You said the enemy will not be able to perform their wicked devices against your children. So we thank you that every assignment of the enemy tonight is canceled by the blood and fire of God. Amen. We thank you, oh God, that your people are free to cry out to you. Yes. We bind the spirit of robbery. That came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We break the spirit of bondage. Yes. And we lose, Father God, resurrection life and resurrection power. Yes, Lord. And we decree, oh God, that your people shall live and not die. And they shall declare the works of the Lord. We release the power in the blood of Jesus to heal everyone that is sick, everyone that has been dealing with mental anguish and mental anxiety. We bind the spirit of schizophrenia, oh God. Oh Rabbi Shata. Father, we thank you right now for moving by your spirit. We release the power in the blood of Jesus. We lose the gifts of healing, the work and the miracles, and we thank you for healing the minds of your people. Yes, Lord. We thank you right now, oh God, for going to the hospitals. We thank you right now, oh God, for going to the mental ward. Yes. And we thank you for all of those patients that are there, God. And they're not mentally disturbed, God. But they are prophets that are locked up, oh God. And we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will cause this prayer to cause an earthquake to take place in the spirit, oh God. Yes, and we thank you right now for opening the prison doors and setting the captives free, oh God. Bring them back in their right mind, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, oh God. They've been crying out to you. And there's been a spirit of corruption yeah, yeah. with family members, with doctors and nurses working against them. Rakashanda Rabasi. Expose the works of the enemy, O oh God. Expose the secret things, the hidden things, the spirit of delusion, the spirit of deception. The spirit of falsehood. The spirit of trickery. False diagnosis. 
But God, they got them so drugged up, they don't know if they coming or if they going. But we inject supernaturally. Oh, Rabashanda. Rabashata. Rikanda Rabashanda. We inject your word, God, into that medication. We inject Isaiah 53 and verse 5 into their medication, oh God. And we command their bodies to reject the medication. We bind the side effects, oh God. We bind the spirit of confusion. And we loose your spirit of peace. Father, they will no longer be drowsy. They will no longer be out of agreement with your word. Bring back to their remembrance every word that they have studied and learned in your word. And bring them out. Activate them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Remove the red tape, oh God. And God, let them be rewarded financially for everything that's been done wrong to them. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the ministry that you have birthed inside of them. And we thank you that you are going to use them for your glory. And they are so important to you tonight that you caused us to gather here tonight to cry out to you on their behalf. So, Father, we cry out for spiritual leaders tonight. We cry out for those spiritual leaders that are hurting, those spiritual leaders that are broken, those spiritual leaders that are suicidal, those spiritual leaders that are walking around bound by many things, oh God. You said if we call unto you that you will answer us and we stand in the, in the gap, oh God. Last night, Apostle Ray, he said wherever ten are. That's all we need is 10. And so we thank you for what you're doing, God. We thank you for how you are moving by your spirit. And every spiritual leader that is caught up with their titles, that is caught up with appearances, that got lost along the way and they've been crying out, but God, they're not crying out to you. We call for a spirit of repentance. Second Chronicles 714. We thank you for helping them to remember, to repent, and to return to you. And some have been led astray because of these end time witches and warlocks that have been released in this hour. And Father, you said in your word to suffer not a witch to live. But Father, there are some witches that are going to humble themselves and they're going to repent. And they're going to accept you into their life as Lord and personal Savior. So we do want to pray for them tonight. We pray, oh God, that you would break the chains of bondage. Cause the scales to fall from their eyes, oh God. So that they will see you. That they will have a Jesus encounter. But we cancel the assignment of every witch and every warlock against every pastor in every city, every state, every country, every nation. In the name of Jesus. And God, we ask that you raise up intercessors that are ready to cry aloud and spare not. Help us, oh God, to be about your business. We cry out to you tonight. For Pastor Leslie, God. We cry out to you tonight. For Pastor Ray, God. And we ask that you bless them. That you protect them. That you shield them. That you preserve them. That you cover them with the blood of Jesus. From the top of their head, oh God. To the soles of their feet. Bless every ministry represented. I cover everybody here in those that are watching with the blood of Jesus. Amen. I place the blood of Jesus on our doorposts. Amen. Death must pass by. In the name of Jesus. Father we thank you. For a bloodline hedge of protection. Yes. 
And we decree Psalms 91 that says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. So we're trusting you tonight, God. And we just want to say we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We appreciate you. And we give you all the honor for what you have done tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Stacy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Servant of the living God. Hallelujah. Walking in your apostolic authority. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all you out there. Hallelujah, Jesus. Receive Hallelujah. what the Lord is pouring out from heaven onto you right now. Amen. As Psalm 133 is, it says, I'm going to pour my, pour my oil upon your head. You're going to soak you from the head all the way to the feet. And that's my Aaron, the holy priesthood. But he also says in... in uh, you know that Jonah chapter 2, there's going to be, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. Well, your heart better be right if you're a holy priest. Because your heart is going to be rent in two. You can't be a holy priest. And a holy priesthood is a chosen generation. And walk around with a stinking heart. And I thank you, Lord, what's been happening is since, uh, you know, the number of days. This is the third day in the sixth session. Six sessions, third day. And the Lord, we, you know, we start off with uh, Romans chapter uh, 6, verses 1 to 8. I entered on 8. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to read it because, you know, time is that you just need to do that time with the Lord. We started with a prophetic act. And the prophetic act went to the prophetic word over there. And from the prophetic word, it went to the prophetic anointing. And it says, earth. And it says, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. On earth. On earth. And the grave. And the grave. And the grave closed that they would be changed. That they would be changed. That they would come and not be a grave or a grave closed. That it would be an altar unto God. Resurrection life. Because the grave and the grave clothes and the chains could not hold the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you read Romans 6, 8 to the end, 15, it says we rise with Him. Amen. We rise with Him. And it's about the altar that is pure, not the grave that stinks. What do you choose? Stacy's back tomorrow, 10 o'clock. We've been going long, six sessions. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. And I know, uh, you're going to have to hold that one. And I know that I know that I know. If you want to bless this ministry, you know how to do it. You know how to bless this ministry. We need your help. You might say, well, God supplies. Yes, he does. And we thank you for the supply for those who are listening to him. So if you're listening to him, you want to bless this ministry so that we can continue to bless those who are speaking here and continue to advance the kingdom of God, we thank you that you partner with us. And it says in the word of God that those who are on the front lines share equally 50-50 for those who supply. Amen. Those who supply. There's no, there is no difference for those who supply with the provisions for those who are on the front lines. And sometimes it's both. Sometimes you go back and forth. It doesn't matter. But there is a blessing for both. So let's be the blessing. Let's be what we, the worship was and is and always will be. Jesus is now, now, the same yesterday and he will be tomorrow. But let's do it together in covenant love, covenant blood. Covenant blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tomorrow we're going to have 
of Passover communion. Amen. And uh, so the Lord bless you. The Lord, you know, the Lord bless you. Yeah. The word of God's come alive here. The prophetic word has been spoken. The oil is being poured out to you wherever you are. You, receive, receive. Faith, believing, receiving. You can have the faith. You've got to believe, but you've got to receive. And anybody that's got any heart, pan, let the Psalm 51, Lord 10, created me a clean heart. Yes, Get rid of that heart, pan, and cling to the rock of your salvation. So the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance his light upon you every morning, so you are refreshed. Be refreshed tomorrow morning when we're back here at 10. Amen. Generally, you know, we, I, want, I want to start at 10 because there's a lot of things that go happen here. Prayer has to start first. Worship's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Worship was awesome tonight. Thank you, ladies. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Connect. Thank you, Corpa. And thank you, uh, Stacy, with other wonders of <laughs> you know, the altar of singing. You know, they yes. You know, I thank you, Lord, for that worship because the worship is a wonderful thing Amen. that we can that worship in spirit and truth. Yes, and thank you for the word. And the Lord give thee peace. Shalom tonight as we come back tomorrow because God is with us, Emmanuel. Amen. And, the, and the Lord thy God says, I love you. So let's do this together. Amen. Till next week. Until tomorrow. Amen.